from completely deceiving their chosen leading lights in a bid to inspire an authentic response, or even just trick them into stumbling onto set in the first place, to some truly bizarre pieces of direction that seemingly had no right to lead to a mesmerizing performance. These cinema crafters knew there was something golden hidden within their actors, and lured out said brilliance via some often insane methods. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 outrageous ways movie directors got performances out of actors. Number 10. Robert Eggers refused to tell Robert Pattinson his entire backstory. The Lighthouse. It goes without saying that providing an actor with as much information as possible when it comes to their character's background usually gives a performer a better chance of delivering the goods. Yet Robert Eggers had other ideas during the forging of his deeply surreal horror survival thriller The Lighthouse. Instead of mapping out precisely what Robert Pattinson's personality of Ephraim Winslow slash Thomas Howard had been through in the lead up to the events of the film, the director decided to leave things as open as possible in order to offer space for the audience to land on their own conclusions regarding R. Pat's character history. Hell, even when Pattinson himself attempted to nudge his director on what Ephraim had been up to beforehand, in between pissing himself and getting pissed, of course, Eggers would admit to responding, Look, any of those things work, you need to decide for yourself or you can't play the scene. And that degree of ambiguity undoubtedly trickled into the finished article itself when all was said and done, with many still debating over what in the holy hell the antics involving Pattinson and Willem Dafoe's nutty wikis all meant some three years later. Number 9. Nicholas Holt was told to do his best Stewie, X-Men First Class it may not have technically been a piece of direction that directly played into what ultimately landed on our screens, but there is no denying that the note Matthew Vaughn threw at Nicholas Holt during his audition for the role of Beast in X-Men First Class definitely sits as one of the most peculiar you'll ever stumble upon. As the Hank McCoy actor would confess a little later down the road to GQ, his eventual director initially asked him to read the part of Beast with an American accent. Then things got a bit weird. Before long, Holt was being nudged to perform his lines in the style of Family Guy Stewie Griffin in one of his tapes for the part. Being a fan of the cheeky animated show growing up though, Holt admitted to having a pretty good impression of Stewie Griffin lined up. And sure enough, one full take as Stewie McCoy later, Holt was eventually landed on as the next Big Blue within the prequel X-Men universe. Number 8. Michel Gondry told his actors to do things others weren't expecting, Eternal Sunshine. Michel Gondry's decision to keep Jim Carrey from going on one of his typically captivating improvised mad ones during the making of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind was ultimately a rather inspired call. However, it was one that legitimately frustrated his leading man while shooting the eventually critically acclaimed 2004 hit. While his co-stars were free to change things up on the fly and be crazy should they feel the need, the director had given Carey strict orders to keep the joking to a minimum in order to produce a rare restrained and vulnerable performance from the usually larger-than-life comedy star. In fact, there were even moments when Gondry admitted to telling Kate Winslet, go as big as you want, this is a comedy in one room, only to wander into another with Carey and claim this is a drama, not a comedy. And while Carey was understandably a little miffed at the time, Gondry would confess to the pair becoming pals in the years that would follow, with the Brastoff star eventually remembering the whole ordeal as a great experience. Ah, everyone loves a happy ending, don't they? Number 7. Chloe Zhao lied about Camille Nanjiani's Bollywood dance, Eternals. He may have been fully prepared to put his body through the ringer in order to get into superhero shape for his MCU bow in last year's Eternals, but that still didn't mean Kamel Nanjiani was fully confident in his frame being up to the task of pulling off an entire Bollywood dance number during Chloe Zhao's ensemble epic. So much so that the Kingo star outright rejected the concept of having to shake his hips in the eventual super flick, with the director going out of her way to seemingly rewrite the sequence as an action set piece in order to convince the comedy star to get physical on her set. However, when Nanjiani did eventually rock up to set in London later down the road, he was met with the revelation of I lied at a Bollywood dance number from a sneaky Zhao. Sensing there was no getting out of the routine this time, the actor eventually put four months of dance training into getting into Kingo jigging shape, with the resulting routine and experience ultimately being classed as really cool by the once hyper-reluctant star. Face your fears, folks, you never know what's gonna happen. Number 6. Quentin Tarantino wouldn't let Christoph Waltz rehearse with the cast in Glorious Bastards 
Undoubtedly feeling as though he'd found something truly special in Christoph Waltz's mesmerizing portrayal of Hans Linda in the lead up to shooting 2009's Inglorious Bastards, Quentin Tarantino had a rather strange request for his chosen antagonist early on in production. As he'd later recall on the Moment podcast, Tarantino wanted Waltz to hold back during the initial script reading with the rest of the cast. With the Barmy director telling his actor, I do not want them to think that they are getting a glimpse of who you are really gonna be. This was all an effort to eventually shock those who would be sharing a scene with the fully landed Waltz when it came time to call action. Tarantino even denied Waltz the chance to rehearse with anyone outside of Denise Menachet's French farmer, Perrier Lapidite, in the film's iconic opening sequence, claiming, I don't want Diane Kruger or Brad Pitt to know your gunslinging abilities until the cameras are a rolling. But with the formidable thespian still sensing he needed some form of rehearsal before stepping onto the high pressure set, Tarantino would accept Waltz's request to rehearse with him beforehand. And the rest was Oscar winning history. Number 5. Francis Ford Coppola asked his actors to whisper horrible things to an owner rider, Dracula. Trying to deliver a legitimately upset response to a scenario on a movie set isn't as simple as flicking a switch and turning on the waterworks by any means. So it's not uncommon for a director to try and genuinely spook an actor into shedding a tear or recoiling in authentic fear when trying to capture an emotional scene on camera. However, there's unnerving a star with a sudden jump scare, as you'll see before the end of this list. And then there's unleashing a wave of whispered improvised abuse that may not have ultimately had the desired effect. Coming during a scene in Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula, the director decided that having Gary Oldman's creepy titular figure whisper horrific and evil words to Winona Ryder was the perfect way to provoke the star into crying. Yet as Ryder would eventually reveal to Times, it kind of did the opposite. Along with stating that the likes of Keanu Reeves and Anthony Hopkins were refused to have any part in the controversial technique that saw the director instruct his actors to say horrible things to her in character in a bid to make her sob for realsies. That being said, a spokesperson for Ryder would still note, although that technique didn't work for her, she loves and respects him and considers it a great privilege to have worked with him. Number 4. Ridley Scott was added again with the alien shocks, Prometheus. Ridley Scott once again opted to scare the crap out of one of his stars during the making of Alien prequel Prometheus, go figure. Many moons on from his decision to not reveal the true extent of what was heading his cast way in the iconic Alien chestburster scene, the director chose to keep some vital details to himself in the lead up to Kate Dickey's brush with a hammerpede in the wake of Rafe Spall's Milburn's rather deadly dance with a snake-like alien. As revealed by special makeup effects supervisor Neil Scanlon, Ridley had indicated something was going to happen. Though the director strategically opted against informing Dicky that the hammerpede would be yanked out of a dummy of Spall's Milburn when the Ford actor rolled over the corpse. Sure enough, in Scanlon's words on the matter, as we pulled it out, it was clearly an enormous shock to her. The screams are real. But what were you expecting? Number 3. Bill Skarsgård was kept away from his younger co-stars, It. Andy Muschietti's call to keep Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise as far away from the child actors involved in the making of 2017's It led to the terrifying star himself wondering whether they would maybe got a touch too far in the end. When discussing the topic of immersing himself in the demonic clown getup beforehand, only to be hidden away from the child stars in a bid to genuinely shock them upon meeting Pennywise for the very first time, Skarsgård would explain to Jimmy Kimmel, I approach him, Jack Dylan Grazer that is, and scream in his face. And we're doing the scene and he's crying and gagging, and in the back of my head I'm like, oh my god, I'm traumatizing this child, what am I doing? Far from being utterly mortified by the entire experience, however, Bill would soon discover the Eddie Casper actor was completely unfazed by the terrifying moment, with Skarsgård also noting, and then they yell cut and I go, are you okay Jack? And he goes, love what you're doing, love what you're doing with the character, and I was like, thank you Jack. So much for that then. Number 2. Evan Rachel Wood was told to be Madonna on Coke, Weird, the Al Yankovic story. For a film that literally comes with the word weird on the tin, it was always safe to assume some strangeness was going to find a way to wiggle into the shoot. And sure enough, when asked to play a true version of Madonna in the upcoming parody biopic, Evan Rachel Wood was dealt a pretty nutty note from her director. After spending weeks consuming interviews and music videos in order to portray the pop sensation to the best of her abilities, the Westworld star was eventually instructed by director Eric Apple to play Madonna in one particular scene as if she was on a lot of cocaine, as you do. 
Going further when discussing her bonkers version of the Queen of Pop in the incoming Daniel Radcliffe starring flick, Woods would tell Entertainment Weekly she's very conniving and completely just using Weird Al, and everything she does is a pathological lie to get ahead in her career. So it was basically taking the genius that is Madonna and turning her into a sociopath that ends up running a drug cartel. The question is, who had a version of Madonna rocking up as a big screen drug lord on their 2022 movie bingo card? Yeah, yeah, you won. Number one, Jean de Bont did the stunts to convince Keanu Reeves they were safe. Speed. Back when Keanu Reeves was making his first few waves as an action star in 1994's Speed, this eventual big screen badass wasn't actually in too much of a rush to commit to performing some of his own stunts as it goes. As Jean de Bont would reveal during a recent sit down with Yahoo Movies, the eventual John Wick and the Matrix icon had to be convinced by the director to take part in some of the action sequences seen in the thrilling bus ride of a flick. How I hear you ask? Well, by de Bont himself demonstrating the stunts first, of course. Sure enough, on the back of seeing DeBont throw himself into the thick of some of the action Reeves wasn't all too sure about, the officer Jack Trevon actor felt safe enough to continue, with the director later wisely noting, You're totally in control about whether you're afraid or not. So the next time you witness a young Reeves impressively hanging out the side of a speeding vehicle, or slide out of said bus on a rickety board in the mid-90s picture, just know that a fearless Jean de Bont likely pulled off the daring feat first on the day. What a guy! And that's our list. Know any other outrageous ways movie directors got performances out of actors? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're there. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this lovely video today. Hopefully, I'll see you very, very soon, but in the meantime, be good to yourself. Bye-bye.